Yeah, as Jason said before, we're kind of um, responding to popular demand with this part of, of our workshop there. We've had requests to talk a little bit about how to link leap and weep. Weep is also a um, software based at SEI. It stands for Water Evaluation and Planning System. And as in particular in South Southeast Asia, um, the water sector and the energy sector interact quite frequently. Um, we thought it would be important to talk a little bit about how these two softwares can be linked. So what is WEEP? WEEP is a water resource management modeling platform. It allows you to create integrated hydrology and water planning models. It's generally GIS based. So the interface is very similar to um, LEAP and you will see, I will show, show WEEP in just a second and you will see that really now that you've gained some familiarity with LEAP, um, the setup that WEEP uses um, really doesn't come as much um, as a, of a surprise. WEEP allows to simulate um, the physical constraints on demands and supply of water in a basin. It is generally focused, um, because it is modeling a water system, its boundaries are not always coinciding with um, the national boundaries that we usually use to delimit our energy system models in LEAP. Nonetheless, um, it can be extremely useful if connected to, to LEAP um, because it allows you to model those physical constraints on water availability, for example, if hydropower is an important part of your energy system. It allows, similar to LEAP, user-created variables, modeling various equations, links to spreadsheets and other models, the other model being LEAP in the case um, that we're showing today, but you can model it to, you can link it to models of water quality, environmental flows, groundwater and economics. And it also has scenario management capabilities. And if you're interested in learning more about how to set up a WEAP model, um, it has a website that is weep.sei.org that provides you with numerous exercises that you can use and explains to you how you can download Weep. Um, and so that will be a good starting point for you if you actually decide that you want to do a WEEP in the future. Today we're going to focus on how you can connect WEEP and LEAP and we're going to cover a variety of approaches. Originally there was a WEEP and LEAP connector that essentially connected the two more or less automatically. We've since realized that the limited flexibility that that connector provides um, is really insufficient in practice. And so the development of the connector has kind of been discontinued. Um, it is still embedded in the interface, but it doesn't really um, work functionally at this point. And so the presentation that I'm gonna give today really focuses on two approaches on integrating WEEP and LEAP. Um, one, I'll talk a little bit about how you can program your own Weep and Leap integration. And then I'm also going to talk about how you can manually integrate the two. And I'm going to show this in a demo so you get a better sense on how that could be done. And for the manual integration, I'm, as I just said, I'm going to give an overview and then I'm also going to, going to show it in a demo. So generally the integration process between WEEP and LEAP follows these four generalizable steps that you'll be executing in slightly different ways, depending on which approach you choose. But generally you have to identify which WEEP and LEAP input variables you wanna exchange between the two models. And in the particular example that I'll be talking about today, um, we are thinking about a hydropower plant that may have a certain capacity in LEAP, but effectively, um, whether it runs at full capacity or not is limited by the physical system. So how much water um, is in the reservoir and how much of that water is available for power generation versus other competing demands such as industrial uses, agricultural 
um, irrigation, for example, agricultural uses or drinking water. And so um, before starting to connect your two models, you always want to think very carefully um, which variables you actually want to exchange between the two models and where it um, WEEP can give you additional information that LEAP may not have um, that is really important in order to build a realistic model. You then also have to identify the directionality. As I just hinted at, in the case of your hydropower plant, you may think that WEEP has the more physically accurate way of modeling water availability for your hydropower system. And so in this particular case, you would be passing information from WEEP to LEAP. But there are other places where you could imagine that LEAP may have information um, that you would be passing on to WEEP. As, for example, if you had um, a demand on energy for irrigation pumps um, and you couldn't actually run your pumps at all times, you might, for example, pass that type of information back to WEEP to limit when you can irrigate or when you cannot. The third point that is very important is that you have to match your time slicing. And so if you think about the hydropower plant where you depend on the physical, um, seasonal water availability, monthly maybe, um, monthly time slicing may be um, the way that you want to set up both of your models. You do have to make sure that the time slicing matches between your models. You cannot run leap on one type of time slicing and then use a different type of time slicing. In WEEP. And then finally, you come to the actual integration, which is to exchange results between WEEP and LEAP. This can be a single exchange, but it can also, and often if you particularly if you build scenarios or you're trying to find an optimal solution, there may be an iterative process where you exchange results. So let us first talk about what that would look like if you were to program your own WEEP leap connection. Um, in order to do that, you have to have a COM compatible scripting tool. Um, you can use the leap API and the script editor that to connect to create your own connector. So you would write your own little script. The way that you um, can edit scripts is through the advanced um option in leap and then there is a little button that is called edit script that you can call up and it would open a window that will allow you to edit scripts you can also write your scripts externally to leap and then connect them here um, and then if you place them in the correct folder they would show up under your run area script um, and so this way you could access different functions. And then you would control weep and leap from the general scripting environment. For example, one COM compatible scripting tool that would work with leap is Python, one that is um, open source. This is one that is open source and that um, people generally have good access to. And then there are some example workflows that I just quickly want to talk through. One is here, A on the left hand. So you could, for example, be calculating your results in WEEP. You could write them out, um, the specific variable of interest, for example, water availability um, or, um, yeah, or energy water available to, for use by power generation to an Excel file. You would then read that Excel file into LEAP using the import Excel function. And then you could calculate um, leap, write out those variables, the resulting variables to Excel and read them back into leap, into leap. The alternative way is to calculate in the respective models, but to actually modify the leap variables via the API. So rather than importing Excel files and writing out Excel files, you would directly read from the Excel in your um, scripting environment, so for example in Python, and then um, modify the leap variables via the API. And do the same in WEAP. 
So I just used the abbreviation so far, API, but what is an application programming interface and what does it look like in Leap? So Leap includes a component object model based API, com based API that allows the integration with other softwares. And that API can be exploited through scripts and other programs. So in the case of Python, it comes with, um, you can download the PyWin32 package um, and that allows you to um, in interact with Leap's API. The Leap scripting engine, so when you open up this script editor, which is shown here on the bottom left, and just to remind you, you get there by clicking on advanced and then edit scripts. It opens up a window in which you can enter um, scripts in a variety of languages, including VBScript, JScript, Python, and Perl. And then you can execute your script by clicking Run Script. Leap provides this basic script editor with an API object browser, and the object browser is here on the right. And so Leap API objects um, allows you to access um, the API objects in Leap. And these um, and the scripts that you create, that you that you save within your area folder, can be attached to Leap events. So for example, you could choose to execute your um, pre-scripted file at a certain place while running your model. So for example, you could um, execute it after running your demand side model, or you could execute it at a specific point in your supply side model. And so this allows you to integrate these scripts into the calculations that happen within the model. And if you want to learn more about the application programming interface in Leap, you can look at the API documentation, which is available in Leap's help. Um, section, and I'm just going to quickly pull up Leap to point that out to you again. So the help section here, you'll be able to, under contents, you'll be able to look at um, the help on API. And then in this particular model, because of the way it's set it up, um, the run area script is not enabled, but normally if you were to set up your own area, you would be able to do that. So let us look how you would do the manual integration between Weave and Deep. This is arguably the simplest way of doing it. Um, it also requires more manual work, but I think it's really useful both for understanding how this works, but also for illustrating how if you were to run, if you were to follow that first workflow in your scripting integration, um, how that would actually work. And so I'm going to call up, I've opened Weep here, and I'm using Weep's kind of Fredonia equivalent, which is called the Weeping River. And so this is a model that essentially models um, a simple river system where um, a multitude of demands have been um, set up. So the river is required to provide water for a variety of competing demands. Namely, there is a reservoir with hydropower, which is upstream from the city. Then within the city, there are some drinking water demands, um, as well as a wastewater treatment facility that requires water. Um, and then there is also a coal power plant and I'm showing you this in Leap because it has this really nice schematic interface. You can already see that the setup is very similar. You also have a data view, which would be equivalent to the analysis view in Leap and a results um, and then there's results view. So it works very, like the setup is very similar to the way that Leap is set up. But I'm showing you the schematic here because it contrasts to Leap. It does have this nice schematic overview. But you can imagine and I have done that, um, that you can set up pretty much the exactly same model with these same demands in Leap 
just that your demands in the leap case would be on energy rather than on water. And so let's switch to leap and just look at that reservoir with hydropower a little bit more. So this hydropower reservoir is run at a maximum capacity or has a maximum capacity of 45 megawatts. And we've also set its maximum availability. In fact, we've assumed that at all times, the hydropower uh, reservoir or the hydropower plant attached to the reservoir can actually be run at maximum capacity. So the maximum availability is always 100%. And I'm in the current account scenario here, but if I switch to the reference scenario, which I called not linked, so it has no information from WEEP, um, the maximum availability is 100%. And the exogenous capacity, you can't see because the imports are very high here, but it is 45 throughout. And you can also see this in chart view. The same for the maximum availability, uh, the maximum availability you can't display. But so it's 45 uh, megawatts throughout time. And now we're going to look into WEEP to see in the results in the data view got that same reservoir with hydropower. And then in the results view, you have the same type of chart table and map set up. So if we look at the chart, and I'm displaying hydropower generation in megawatt here through time, so you can see that we've um, simulated 2000, January 2010 to through November 2014. The power generation actually rarely reaches 45 megawatts. Instead, it varies throughout the year with peaks in between July and September. It's very low um, in early spring and kind of medium low in January. So it is quite clear that the hydropower generation that is feasible according to the water availability in this reservoir is actually not the maximum capacity most of the time. In fact, it never reaches the maximum capacity throughout the time period that we've modeled here. So if we look at the same results view for LEAP, we see nonetheless that LEAP, because we haven't set, because our maximum availability is 100%, throughout this entire time period, it always runs at 45 megawatts of power. So you can see I'm burying the years here on the bottom axis. So this is 2013. Coal steam varies with time, but hydropower here in green is always the same throughout time. This is true for all years. So in order to um, add, so in fact, in order to represent a system realistically, we would want to tell LEAP that the hydropower plant cannot be run at maximum capacity at all times. And so we would like to pass this data here, which I can also show in the table format. So we would like to let it know that in fact, it can only run this hydropower plant at these specific capacities through time. And so we can export this data into Excel using the little Excel button here on the right. And that will open an Excel file, which looks like this. So this is the hydropower generation in megawatts for all scenarios. Well, I'm only running one scenario. All reservoirs, it's only one reservoir in all month. For January 2010, and if we scroll to the right all the way to December 2014. And it tells us what the hydropower generation according to LEAP really should be at all of these times. Now, in order to import this data into LEAP, it needs to come into, in a specific format. And that specific format, I've, you would have to rearrange this in order to, to do this, but I've already set this up for the purpose of this demo. It has to come 
in the time slices that are also defined in leap. So those have to match between weave and leap. Um, so I have the years here on the first column, then the month on the second column. That's these are the time slices in this particular case, and then the power generation on the third column. And what I want to give leap an in information is how many percent of the overall a maximum exogenous capacity of 45 megawatts can actually be used. And so I've just done a little calculation here, which says that the maximum C1, in this case, the um, generation capacity of the hydropower plant divided by um, the exogenous capacity defined in LEAP, 45 megawatt, and then in order to turn it into a percentage multiplied by 100. And so I can go into LEAP and I can import this data. And since I want to compare it to um, the baseline scenario, I'm actually gonna cre create a new scenario here that will inherit from the reference scenario. I will call that new scenario hydro from WEEP. And then I will also add some notes um, I will tell it that I'm taking the capacity from WEEP um, and I could add some more information, maybe which area, which particular model in WEEP I'm using. Um, and I may tell some more information in order to, in the future, be when I look back at these nodes, understand exactly what I'm going to change. And then I'm also going to actually tell it that I'm going to, um, change the maximum availability so when I look at the scenario next time I know exactly what also what I've changed but I don't know whether you remember there's also the possibility to actually look at the equations that have been changed between two scenarios. So this would also be a very um, useful thing to look at if you want to understand what differences um, have been or what changes have been made between two scenarios. So then I'm gonna close this. I now have a new scenario called Hydro from Weep that I can look at here. I'm gonna to toggle over to maximum availability. This is the variable that I want to change. I'm going to select Hydro from Weep as the scenario. And now I want to change this expression, which was 100 in the past. But I now want to use that information that I have from Weep in order to update this availability. And the way that I do this is I'm going to go into the builder so it's a little bit easier to see. And then I'm going to go onto the function button. I can also type the function directly and it will because i've recently typed a function that i'm going to use now it already shows up in the help window this would also happen if i typed it into the builder so i'm going to use the function that is called read from excel and then it gives me two options in contrast to what jason was showing during the exercises um, this morning here i actually get to define the path that i'm reading from so i have saved the file with the four columns that I just showed you here. I called it Hydro Availability from Weep. I'm going to open that. And then I'm also going to define the range. And so, as I said before, Leap expects um, that it's the first three columns and that they're set up in a very specific way. Just want to switch to the Excel file again so you can see what I'm telling it now. So I'm going to select cell A1 all the way through cell C60. So I'm not going to include the last column because this is just my calculation for confirmation. Fortunately, because I didn't submit. It deleted 
delete from Excel, but it still has the right, the right pathway here. So I'm gonna add this through C60 and I'm gonna click OK. And then we said we were gonna um, read in these values, but then we also needed to transform them into an availability, which is given in percent. So I actually need to add um, some additional things here, some additional variables in order to make that calculation. And so I wanna take from the reservoir with hydropower, I wanna select the variable that is the exogenous capacity. And so by opening the select branch um, wizard and selecting the reservoir with hydropower, I can then click next. And it will give me all the different variables that I saved for this particular process. And so I'm gonna select exogenous capacity. And I click next. And then I'm not going to use a scale. I'm just going to use the raw value because the values that I'm, I've am uploaded from my Excel file are also in megawatts. So I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to finish. And I'm going to submit what I've just put into the builder. And now it's showing up in the expression above. And just to confirm that it has actually uploaded the right variables, I can go into, well, for one, I can, I can go into the table view. And I can. You might want to multiply that expression by 100, I think. Oh, I forgot the multiplication. I see. Thank you. Now it should show up, right? Yes. So now I have variable. So in the initial year, the historical year 2010, it's still the availability is still 100%. But then once I get into the projections, it's now using the values that I've just uploaded from Excel that are transferred from WEEP. And I can look, for example, here, this is the very first January value for 2011 to make sure 13.9. I can compare this to my own calculation. Here. And those seem to match. And so apparently LEAP has executed this calculation correctly. And now I can look at the results. And I can compare them to this not linked scenario. This is what I showed you earlier, where the hydropower generation is 45 um, megawatts throughout time at all years. I can now look at the new scenario that I've just set up. And we can see that now the hydropower generation is consistent with the information that we um, got from WEEP and shared with LEAP. Here, it is much lower overall um, then 45 megawatts, it's highest in December and also elevated around September. I can look at the other years, start at the beginning. So this is 2013, 2012, and then 2011. And if I go all the way back to the historical year, I can see here the availability is still um, is still the 100%, um, so the total power generation is 45 megawatts. Of course, you could also change the historical years. So here, I'm just showing this to you as an illustration on what the difference is between the scenarios, but in fact, you could also use the historical information that you have from WEEP in order to um, force your LEAP model with them. And so here I've just outlined the steps that we've just followed. Um, so you can follow them on your own if you were so inclined. Um, generally, um, this is how, how you could set up a manual weep leap integration. And you could run these, um, you could run it with different data from weep. If you were to run scenarios in weep, you could um, actually create different um, loop scenarios that reflected those weep scenarios. Um, so there is a variety of ways that you could integrate um, Weep and Leap iteratively too. So the important takeaways um, from this Weep Leap integration is that you really have to think about what time slices make most sense in both models. So if you are um, trying to get a sensitivity to water availability in your hydropower, an annual time slice may not make sense at all. Instead, you may consider using monthly or seasonal time slices. 
and the type slicing in leap and weave needs to match. Um, you cannot, um, you do not have to specify every year. So I just um, gave data um, for all the four years um, that we were simulating, but you could in fact just give one year and then leap will just interpolate between, or a couple of years and leap will interpolate between between those years and it will maintain the time slices. So it will give you the average value for a January or it will interpolate just for the general values for the February values, et cetera, separately. So it keeps that um, monthly or seasonal cycle that you've given it. The weep and leap linkage is not generally dynamic. So finding optimal um, paths for when you are trying to optimize both your demand, your water, as well as your energy demand sides, for example, and supplies may require several iterations and multiple scenarios that you that you have to explore. So you kind of have to think about what um, the moving pieces are in your two models in order to find what some of these um, optimal um, scenarios are that are really representing the linkages in your energy and your water system. 